By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are diving into a new format. At least it's new for me. It's actually not that new. It is called Revised 40. And I got challenged to play a revised 40 game by my brand new patron, Tim. So Tim, I'm really looking forward to playing against you first because your name is Tim. So we have two Timmies today. And also because this is a, uh, a brand new thing for me to, uh, to dive into revised 40. I have actually played it once before where I played with Frozen Shades and Dark Rituals. And uh, it didn't go very well, but I do like the idea of Frozen Shade and Dark Ritual. It's kind of like a forgotten combo, isn't it? You know, your your Dark Ritual gets turned into a Giant Grove for your Frozen Shade. But, at, you know, I'm getting sidetracked here. I'm not going to bother you with those details. Today, I am playing with a Timmy deck, of course. It's called Timmy in the Woods. It is blue and it's green. And uh, my opponent is playing with two decks, actually, one at a time, because we're playing two matches in one video. The first match, I'm going to play against his red and white deck. It's full of burn and big flyers. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a tough match. But, you know, who knows? My deck's got some tricks up its sleeve as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And the other deck that he's playing with is a blue and a green deck, which is, I'm also playing blue green, so that's kind of funny, uh, and it's way more controlling, so it's it, it's based around Winter Orb and Black Vice, so it's a completely different story. I think against that deck, I stand a much better chance if I'm just looking here at the deck photos. Um, and before we jump in, maybe it's good to kind of first discuss some of the rules about Revise 40. Now, if you already know the rules, feel free to check out the description below, because there you will find, as always, the timestamps. And by, you know, choosing the timestamp MTG games, you can go straight to the actual games that we played. Uh, as I said, there are two matches as well, so you can go from one match to the other. I'll put a separate timestamp for those in also. So it's like really easy for you to go from one part of the video to the next. But um, like I said, if you're not aware of Revised 40, it is pretty good to know something about the deck construction. So first, if your deck needs to be 40 cards, and there is no sideboard. Actually, there's no maximum deck size. The minimum is 40 cards. You can play with more than that. But again, no sideboard. And your deck may include five rares, but only three copies of the same rare. So you kind of play with four copies of a rare like you're used to in this format, only with three. And then your deck may include up to 10 uncommons, but again, no more than three copies of the same uncommon. And then we get to commons. With commons, you can play any number of cards. So it's limitless, right? And now um, there, are, there is this common that we all know. It's red, it's one red, deals three damage to any target. Yes, it's Lightning Bolt. Obviously, they have upgraded Lightning Bolt to an uncommon to make sure that, you know, you're not going to play with a bazillion bolts and win every single game. That would be kind of boring. They've also upgraded Curday because that turned out to be a problem as well in the common slot. So those two cards have been upgraded to uncommon. There are also some um, restricted cards, your usual suspects like Wheel of Fortune and Soul Ring. Now, um, I'm not going to mention all of those, but if you want to know um, more about it, so if you want to see the whole list, I'll put a link to the rules page of the Northern Paladins in the description below. So please check that out. And in that description, you can also find a link to their um, to their Facebook group and their Discord. And I believe both of them are free to join and you're free to join this revised 40 game. So it is actually a really easy format to step into if you don't have a big collection. It's, it's very cheap. And according to Tim, what he told me, a lot of decks are very close, uh, you know, so it's very, it's a very playable format. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, we've already looked at the decks in the introduction, so I'm not going to do a special, you know, tech video on the decks because they're basically so basic. Maybe, you know, one thing that I can say, and I will just show my, my Timmy deck again, that maybe you're seeing the planning, right? There is a five card combo in this deck, which is basically the dream. What I'm hoping to achieve is have an install energy on my Tim, an instal energy on my Birds of Paradise and a Stasis out because that way I can ping my opponent for one every single turn because instal energy let me untap my Tim an additional time. So it doesn't care that I cannot untap it because of Stasis. And then I can use my Birds of Paradise to pay the one blue every time because it's got an instal energy on it. I can again, you know, uh, untap it. So that's, that's kind of the dream that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully I'm gonna succeed in these two matchups and like i said the first match is going to be against this deck so red white flyers 
And um, I have to be honest, it's looking kind of scary, but you know, who knows? Maybe I can ping my way to victory. Let's start with match number one, Timmy into the forest against RW Flyers. Game number one, here we go. So we've got red and white Flyers, that is Tim's deck, and I'm playing with uh, blue and green, Timmy in the forest. And it's uh, Tim who's on the play, I'm on the draw here. Starting with a forest into a land or else. That's actually what I want to do here. I want to ramp up, hopefully turn two, play a prodigal sorcerer. The cool thing is I'm playing with eight Timmies in total and they're all altered. So you're going to see a lot of different styles of Tims here. So hopefully you're going to enjoy that. I'm going to pass a turn here to Tim. No lightning bolt so far on the land or so that's good news. Going to tap two. Are we going to see a fireball? No, we're going to see a Pegasus. Um, maybe it's nice now to note, by the way, that Tim's deck also has a few fourth, uh, cards from 4th edition and 5th edition, I believe. And when you're playing a revised 40 tournament, those sets are not legal, I think. So just to give you a heads up. So again, check this side of the Northern Paladins for all the ins and outs of the, of the rules and, and, the, and the rule sets that are allowed and all that stuff, if, if you care for that stuff. Um, starting here, playing out a, uh, my first Protocol Sorcerer here. This is a special one. It's made by the, by the librarian of Lang. He makes, makes super cool altars. So very happy uh, with this one. I think he's got a Twitter account still, MTG Underground, I think, but I'm, I'm actually not quite sure. But he's very well known for his altars and especially the, the flavor text that he puts on his altars. There's the attack with the uh, Pegasus. So I'm going to drop here to 19. And now I can use my Timmy. I can kill the Pegasus. This is what I want to do in life. Tapping a green. Do I have an instal energy maybe? Instal energy. So this enchant creature uh, allows me to untap the creature an additional time. So then I can ping for two with the Tim. I really like instal energy. I think it's cool. It's a card you don't see often. For obvious reasons, but I really like it. And this is why, because you're kind of setting yourself up for two for one. Here we see a bolt on the Tim. Now, I remember this moment in the game. We had a little rules talk, and I said, you know, the Tim Tim's ability is a fast effect, so you can respond with the bolt, but the ability is still going to happen. Um, and Tim thought that, you know, because I respond with the bolt on you saying you want to tap it for damage, the Tim is going to die before it actually has been able to tap and deal the damage. Now, it turns out we were both kind of wrong because it's called an activated ability now in a 2022. And uh, activated abilities go on the stack. So, yes, it still happens. But we decided, as you can see, for it not to happen. We said, you know what, we'll just follow the rule that you can respond with a bolt and the ping is not going to happen. So, in this case, the, um, the Pegasus is still alive. The horse is still flying. And Tim can still attack with it. So I'm going to drop here to 18. And he's going to pass the turn. Not doing anything. It's quite lucky. So four cards in hand. Hopefully I can find another Tim. I think I am. I'm tapping three. Here we go. Okay, tapping the Lanawer instead. Oh, this is a cool one. So Pirate Timmy. This is a full altar. It's made by uh, Jurian. Shout out to you, Jur. He's uh, a member of the uh, Dutch old school community. Very chilled out guy. Plays a lot of X points. And uh, I think actually you're that we haven't played a game together on the channel. We have to do that. But that is for another episode. Here we see Tim playing another land. Actually, if he has a Sheevan Dragon. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Oh, there's the Sheevan. Hopefully I've got Power Sync. Or this game is over very quickly. There's the Power Sync. Perfect. Taking care of business. I'm really happy because it would have been quite a boring first game for you guys if that Sheevan would have resolved. Because it would have just killed me. And now I can use yours, Timmy, as well to kill the Pegasus. I'm looking forward to that. He's first going to attack me with it, putting me on 17. I'm going to untap. So I can, you know, I can attack. Okay, I'm going to ping now first. Because he's tapped out, that's why I'm doing it now. Remember, we decided to have that rule where he can respond with direct damage. So now that he's tapped out, I want to use the pinging right now. So killing the Pegasus, attacking with the Lanawer, finally dealt my first point of damage to Tim. So Tim is now on 19. 
Only one card in hand. I hope that's a counter spell for my sake. Tapping. Ooh, balance. That is annoying. It's a two for one. Uh, and I have to, I think, yeah, I got to put a land away. But I only have one card in hand. Tim's got three. So Tim has to discard two cards. So at least that's something. You know, could have been worse for me. So I lose three cards and he loses three cards. So it's, it's not the end of the world, but I am losing the, the Tim and the Lanawar. So he's discarding, I believe, a Sarah Angel. And that's a red card. That's an Earthquake. Okay, wow. That's actually really good for me. Is losing two super good cards. Two cards in hand and a pass on my side. Finding a white. Ooh, does he have another Sarah in hand perhaps? Tapping to white here. That would be really bad. Sarah Angel. Do I have another? I think I got a power sink. I'm like, I'm tapping so quickly. Yeah, power sink. And of course, power sink goes together quite well with the uh, stasis strategy in the deck. Going to two. Tapping three. Okay, there's another Tim. This is made by uh, Lady Death Touch, this one. It's actually revised, but it's been black bordered. And uh, the Tim is kind of, it's got glasses because those are my glasses and it's got a little like goatee. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of, it, it looks like me a little bit. That's what uh, Lady Death Touch went for. It's, it's pretty cool. And it's, it's again, it's, it's a Tim that I, that I play with with a lot of joy. Oh, disintegrate here. On my life, yeah, I think it's probably a good decision. On my life total, dropping to 11. I mean, this is the problem of my deck. It, it doesn't really have a punch, does it? I just need to have a lot of, like, Timmy's out. But the problem with that is I'm opening myself up for cards like Balance, Fireball, and Earthquake. So it's, it's a super vulnerable strategy. And you're going to run out of Counterspell sooner or later, even in a format where you can play with more than four. You know, because in, in theory, I could play with, like, eight Power Sinks as well. Maybe I should, by the way. Anyway, playing uh, Birds of Paradise. So the plan still is Stasis, Birds of Paradise, Protocol Sorcerer, and then put an instant energy on the birds and the Tim. If I can make that happen. I, I feel kind of lucky because it looks like Tim is just drawing blanks here. No cards in hand, so he just played a land. It's going to pass, I think. So that's going to give me a little opening. The problem, of course, of my deck is that all I can do is, is just ping for one. Which is not good enough. If at least I can find an instant energy, I can go twice as fast. Okay, so he still has a card in hand, it seems. What does he want to do with it? Okay, just the planes. I got kind of scared. I thought, okay, do you have more direct damage? He does have a lot of lands, by the way. If he finds a fireball, he can just almost kill me straight. That's seven, nine mana. Finding another Lanawar Elves and passing the turn. So Tim's on 17, so I'm pinging on end step. And at least with the Lanawar, I can go a little bit faster. I can also attack with the Lanawar Elves, dealing some additional damage. More lands for Tim. So Tim is really giving me an opener here. Putting him on 16. Going to untap. Three cards in hand. Going through the graveyard. Maybe I've got a regrowth. I mean, I could, I could regrowth an instal energy. Probably better to just, you know... Yeah, I'm doing the instal energy, which is... I understand why, because I want to use, you know, the plan is instant energy, but it's of course better to get another Tim out. I guess the slide, the, 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 the one good thing is I can immediately deal an extra damage because of the instant energy. That's, that's something, that's some value. But again, I'm setting myself up for two for one. If Tim now finds a bolt, I'm going to lose two cards. Whereas if I would have gone for take a Tim out of the graveyard, play another Tim, a bolt would only solve one of the two problems. Pinging him again, but we are going faster now because I can ping him for two instead of one. And I've got the Lanawar Elves. He's on 13. I just hope that I've got some counter magic in hand. Attacking your 12. 
Attacking with the Lunderer, 11. Untapping, of course, to Tim. Exactly. I'm a little late with that, but okay. Tim, one card in hand, passing turn. Okay, this is... I mean, I'm getting hopeful here. Tim's on 10. I can put him on 9. Exactly. Untap the Tim again. Put him on 8 with the Lanoir. I'm getting close. I mean... What do I have in hand here? Three cards in hand. Two cards, Tim passing again. Put him on seven, right, with that last one. Oh, he wants to respawn Disenchant on the install. Okay, could have been worse. I believe he should go to seven, or am I missing something? Attacking with the Lana, we're going to put him on seven now then. Maybe it was a 9, 1 to 8. Anyway, doesn't matter. Passing to turn. I'm, I'm getting closer, but at a certain point, Tim will have to find something. Like, I'm incredibly lucky that all he finds are lands and a disenchant. You know, if he's got a fireball, he can win it. If he can just, you know, if he's got like a big creature. Dragon Whelp, we haven't really seen any Dragon Whelps. That would be a problem for me. He's, he also has so much mana now. 2, 4, 6, 9, 11. 11 mana. If he's got one more mana and a fireball, I'm dead. So two cards in hand. Okay, he's going to do something here. Scary stuff. Tapping 4. Okay, there's a Dragon Whelp. Could have been worse because I can chump block the Dragon Whelp with the birds. The problem again is even if it looks like I want to tap a blue. Okay, I'm going to play an unsummon in his end step. I'm going to ping him to six. I can put him on five. I'm getting closer. Playing a forest. Attacking again. I'm going to put him on five. Oh, so close. But he's just going to recast the whelp. And I can only play a power sink for five, and he's got just too much mana. I cannot really stop the whelp, so I got to start chum blocking it with my bird, I guess. He's on five. I'm on 11. Yeah, he can kill me with two swings with the whelp. So the whelp is a 2-3 flyer, and you can pay one red to give it plus one plus O, oh, and if you pay more than three red... The Dragon Whelp destroys itself. So what he can do, what Tim can do is first attack for 5 next turn, putting me on 6. And then next turn attack for 6, killing me. Oh, this is tough. Looks like Tim's going to respond with a bolt here. Maybe he's going to bolt the bird, actually. Do I have enough? 2, 4, 6... No, I don't have enough. I think I want to try to play a power sink, but it's not going to work. Because I can play a power sink for six. That's not enough. Yeah, changing my mind. <laughs> my mind, you're going, wait a minute. So despite the fact that I've got tons of mana, I don't have enough. And um, is he going to, oh, interesting. So he's going to kill the Tim. I guess that makes sense. But at least he's offering me, I thought he was going to bolt the bird, but he's going to kill the Tim instead. So next turn, I'm going to probably lose the bird here. I've got three cards in hand, passing the turn. So close. He's on five. I'm so close, but I think I'm just not going to make it here. There's a Sarah Angel. So now if I have that power sink, I can now play that power sink. Yeah, I got the power sink. Why am I tapping the bird? I shouldn't tap the bird. I should just tap the Lanoer. This is weird. Why am I tapping the bird? Anyway, he's checking his mana as well. Is there a reason for me to tap the bird instead of the Lanawer? I mean, I'm probably not going to block the Whelp now because he cannot pump it anyway. Oh, yeah, of course, he's going to put the mana from the Power Sink into, into the... Uh, oh, yeah, now I'm changing it. Yeah, because that was a stupid move. But he's going to put the mana from the Power Sink into the Whelp. And then he's probably going to swing in. So he's going to attack here. Probably going to just jump. Hmm. 
I mean, I think I should jump. Okay, taking the damage instead. Okay. In a way, that makes sense. I'm on six. I'm not dead, you know, so could be worse. But I mean, it's, it's difficult. Attacking for one. Tapping two. Okay, there's a stasis. Oh, that is risky. Do I have more to play out then? Playing out a Tim. Okay. Very cool Tim, by the way, by uh, dirtling around. All these cool altars. It's really nice. But, yeah. I, I'm not sure about this stasis. I'm doing this because he's completely tapped out, right? But... I mean, yeah, gotta pay a blue. Oh, this is so risky. I'm hoping, of course, to find an instal energy here. Passing the turn. Oh, no. And then he can untap with the whelp. What am I gonna do? The thing is, I mean, I still have two Birds of Paradise to pay for the stasis. I think I shouldn't. I think I just, maybe next turn I should let the, um, the stasis go, to be honest. Choosing not to, though. Tapping the bird. So one bird's left. Okay, finding an island. I mean, this strategy is not working. I understand why I'm doing this with the stasis, because I, I really was running out of options. But, I mean, I still had the birds to chump. Tapping the blue. Finding another blue passing the turn. The problem, of course, with stasis is the moment that I lose stasis, I mean, Tim is going to untap with everything, a handful of cards, and of course that dragon whelp. I'm basically going to die now. I think this is a bad decision on my part. Look at that. Tapping the birds of paradise instead of the island. The problem here is that if I then cannot pay for stasis anymore. I don't have my birds as a potential blocker. I was so close, man. Tim, you're on four. But I think I'm going to lose this. I think I'm not playing this right with the stasis. I mean, I could have chump block with the birds a couple of more turns. You know, who knows what would have happened. There is a tap for two. What does he have? No untapping again. I mean, if he's got a fireball, he could fireball my Tim and my Lanaware, I guess. Because he's got enough mana to do that. But why would he? I would just wait for me to kind of kill myself with the stasis. Because that's basically what I'm doing here. He is tapping three, though. Is he going to play like an earthquake, maybe? Earthquake. Oh, that is risky. That is risky. So I'm going to... Put Tim on three. Then the Earthquake resolves. He's going to go to one. I'm so close. I am so close. Now I'm going to pay for Stasis. I'm also so dead. I'm so close, but I'm also so dead. So Tim is on one, but I, I cannot pay the Stasis next turn. So all that Tim has to do is, is, is just, all he has to do is wait, basically. If he just waits. And I think I think in hindsight, and it's always easy to look back at these things, I think I should have uh, you know, not played the stasis then again. If I wouldn't have, you know, Tim could have played his earthquake and, and killed me with that. So it's it's tough. Anyway, losing the stasis, the only out for me here would be I guess a blue source and having an unsummon in hand, unsummoning the whelp. That would buy me time, but remember, Tim's got four, maybe five cards in hand. Yeah, he's just going to kill me, right? Yeah, there's a huge fireball. He even could have killed me with the whelp, but <laughs> this fireball works too. Instal energy in hand, and I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I drew it too little, too late. Oh, man. I think that moment, I was going to lose regardless, I think, but that moment when I tap my Birds of Paradise 
instead of the blue source. That was a mistake. I think my thinking there was he can play a bolt or direct damage, kill my bird, and then I don't have anything to pay the stasis with. But I should have thought, wait a minute, I can use my bird to tap for green to play an insult energy on my bird and untap my bird again. So that was that was a mistake in my thought processing. And also uh, that bird is really good as a chomp blocker against uh, the dragon whelp if i can no longer pay for the stasis and everything untaps on his side i still have my bird to block you know uh, you got to play towards your outs anyway uh lesson learned for me there are no sideboards in revised 40 so we're going to continue straight away with game number two game number two here we go so at least i'm on the play St of course starting with the mana dork that's what i want to do birds of paradise don't bolt the bird please tim because then i can play tim hopefully Turn number two. There is a Benelish hero. That's okay. That's okay. I'll just play a Tim and ping it the turn after. Let's see if I can find one of my protocol sorcerers. Hopefully I can play out some one that you haven't seen yet. Oh, this is cool. This is Tim Burton, Tim. This is made by um, Alters by PC. Very cool guy. He also made the Tim the Enchanter, which is also in the deck. Very talented altar artist. And passing the turn here, so. Tim playing out a mountain. It is kind of funny playing my Timmy deck against him. That's kind of fun. There's a bolt. Bolt the bird. So the bird is gone. Gonna drop to 19. At least I still have my Tim Burton. I, I think, to be honest, maybe I would have bolted the Tim Burton here instead. Because I don't need a lot of mana with my deck anyway. Like, I need three, right? That's the magic number. Okay, there's Pirate Tim. Made by Frank. Who loves to kind of doodle. And, uh... I think, Frank, you played this against me. Like, weren't we playing old school EDH or something? And I said, oh, that's so cool. And I kind of claimed it from you. So I'm sorry for that. Whenever I say like an alter Tim, I have to have it. Anyway, using Tim Burton, there's a bolt. And remember, we're still using this rule where you can, you know, cancel out the ping. So what I should have done, considering that weird rule that we're using here, is I should have pinged the previous turn in my main face because then Tim was tapped out. Anyway, losing the uh, the Tim Burton Tim here and taking a damage. Going to drop to 18. At least there are two of his bolts in the bin. That's something. Remember, bolts are uncommon here in Revised 40, so he can only play with three. He's already played out two of those, which is good news for me. He, still's got the, he still has the Earthquakes and the Fireballs and Disintegrates, but still, I have some counter magic as well, so... Anyway, tapping three, another Tim? Probably. I've got eight in the deck in total. Hey, there's Tim the Enchanter. Such a cool Tim. And this, this Tim the Enchanter, I made uh, 25 of these. And when, you, when you're a patron, yeah, this is a shameless plug. When you're a patron, you can join the Timmy Talks uh, tournaments that I organized to thank my patrons. And if you win a tournament, then you get one of these Tim the Enchanters. As long as I still have them, of course. There's a Dragon Well played by Tim here. That is a problem. I need one more Tim and I can ping the Dragon Well to death. That would be pretty sweet. Another Tim! Yeah, there's a Dirtling around Tim. So now next turn, if they all survive, I can ping the Dragon Well to death. You know, and if... Okay, okay. Getting my Tim Burton back as well. That is pretty cool. If I've got four Tims, I can start Timming down. I can start mowing down Sarah Angels. That would be really sweet. I'm just, I'm like crossing my fingers right now, hoping that Tim doesn't have an Earthquake. If he's got an Earthquake for one, because I'm tapped out, I'm absolute toast. Maybe he's got a fireball. That would be a problem too, but not as much as an earthquake. Sarah Angel instead. Okay, this is actually not too bad. Remember, I've got, I've got another Tim in hand. Pinging Tim here. He's going to go to 18. Untapping and can play the Tim. Can kill the Dragon Whelp. So killing the Dragon Whelp here. 
Dragon Whelp is dead. Tap three. Oh, this is a really cool altar, by the way. I made a special video about this altar. It, it doesn't look so great here on the camera from a distance, but it's super cool. So it, yeah, again, if, if you're into that stuff, check out the info card that's appearing right now. It's really a cool altar, Timmy. Anyway, there is a mountain. Next turn, I can kill the Sarah. Okay, Tim, just don't play any of your direct damage. Please do not. Tim, please, just pass the, it's okay, pass the turn, it's fine. Pass the turn, do nothing. Trying to use my, uh, my Skywalker ability here, do nothing. Pass the turn, Tim. Listen to Jedi Timmy, pass the turn. This is not looking good for me, this is not passing the turn, Tim. Oh no, oh no, Fireball? Da, 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 da. Oh no, don't do it. Maybe, maybe it's a Sheevan. Oh, Fireball. I mean, Sheevan would be bad, but not as bad as this. Fireball, at least it's a nice signed copy by uh, Mark Tadeen. Killing three birds with one stone. This is brutal. Three sorcerers killed by a huge Fireball. Attack with the Sarah dropping to 12. At least I can ping him. No, I can't. I cannot. It's got summoning sickness. Oh, this is brutal. Another Tim, Tim Burton. I'm, I'm playing out a lot of Tims at least this turn, but or this game, I should say, but it's not looking good for me. He's going to attack, right? Going to put me on eight. No, another Sarah. Oh, that's bad. No counter magic, no unsummons, no nothing. Dropping to eight. Pinging him down here. Going to go to 17. That's not enough, though. This is so bad. I think I'm dead. I think we're going to lose this one here. Attacking with two. Pinging him, putting him on 15, and that's it. I am a goner. So, uh, Tim, congratulations winning this first match. But, but don't go away. Like I said, we are playing a second match. And in that second match, I'm playing against another deck of Tim. Uh, it's based on Winter Orbs and Black Vices. It is blue, it is green, and actually, I think I stand a chance against this one. So uh, stay seated, maybe maybe get a drink and come back, but get ready for another match. Let's take a look at uh, Timmy into the forest against the, uh, the blue and the green orb uh, prison plan of Tim. Game number one of match number two. So Tim is here playing with his green and blue Winter Orb, Black Vice, Prison Plan. There's a Vice turn one. Dropping to 17. This is what he wants to do. Hopefully I can find, yeah, find one of my Mana Dorks. Finding a Birds of Paradise. I really cannot complain about that. I, I think I've had a Mana Dork every turn one. And this is better because Tim now doesn't have access to red. So, I mean, I should do much better with this matchup. Playing a blue there, an island. And is he going to play another vice? Another vice? So I'm going to drop to 13. I mean, I have taken seven damage already. Seven cards in hand. If it can drop a land and play a Tim, at least I can go to five. Or even better, install energy. That is great. This is perfect for me because I'm really emptying my hand here, tapping the birds now for two mana because of that install energy. There's Tim the Enchanter. So this is great news for me. Things are really looking up. Four cards in hand. And I mean, even if Tim now plays, for example, a Howling Mine, I don't really mind because I've got quite a lot of, um, you know, mana now because of that instant energy on the bird. He is tapping too. Does not mean that he is playing a Howling Mine? Yep, there's the Howling Mine. I actually don't mind. I'm not going to take any damage. I've got four mana. If I can play a land, I've even got five mana. I'm sure I can find some more Tims. There I go with a forest. Tapping a forest. Another instal energy, perhaps. Another instal energy. Playing with three of those. It, it isn't uncommon, so unfortunately, I cannot play with more than three. Pinging Tim here. Tapping... Okay, a blue and a green. Do I have a stasis? <laughs> oh, there is a stasis. This is really funny because this is the five card combo that I talked about 
in the introduction. So what happens now is because of the install energies, I can untap my creatures one additional time. Now, because of stasis, nothing untaps, right? But install energy allows me to at least untap my creatures once. So that means when you have a Birds of Paradise and an install energy, you can continue paying for that one blue for stasis. And in this case, I can also continue pinging Tim with my Protocol Sorcerer. Now, the only problem of this strategy is the fact that Tim has a Howling Mine and two vices on board. So I actually think that I may be now killing myself with this strategy, but it was just too tempting not to do it. I wanted to show this combo to you guys. But um, yeah, the problem here is, you know, I'm gonna get too many cards in hand and that means those vices are gonna work. I mean, for now I'm safe still. If it can find enough lands, I guess, and then just play out more Tims, I guess I'm kind of safe. We'll just have to wait and see. Four cards in hand. I believe in the deck of Tim, there are also some hurricanes, so he could potentially hurricane his way out of this. He does then need another land. So if he can find another land and then play a hurricane for one, and I cannot counter it, which, yeah, maybe I can, maybe I can, I don't know, but then, I, then my bird gets killed. So I'm going to take my turn. So I'm going to pay again, of course, with my Birds of Paradise for the Stasis untapped because of the instill energies. Six cards in hand, playing a four. It's going to go to five. Can I empty my hand here? Or am I just going to take the damage? I can choose to take a little bit of damage as well, of course. This is tough. Like... I mean, Tim's got two vices. I'm still on 13, though. I'm pretty good. So five cards in hand. And deciding to pass here. So Tim, of course, drawing the cards with the mine. Tapping. Are we going to see a hurricane here? There's a hurricane. So hurricane for one. This is kind of the scenario that I talked about. So he now kills my birds. I mean, I don't think there's anything. I could play unsummon on my bird, but... Okay, I guess I'm going to do that. Playing an unsummon on my own birds of paradise. But I'm still going to lose the instill energy. So I think it's not really going to help me much. I'm going to go to 12 because of the damage. I can ping, of course, Tim here for one. I'm going to put him on 15. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to take my turn. I'm going to go to 10 because of the double vice. This is not really... Okay, I'm letting the stasis go. I think it's a good decision because it's not really going my way. I am a little bit surprised then that I played the... Um, That I, that I played the unsummon. I think maybe that was a mistake. I can still untap, of course, the Tim. Yeah, exactly, with the install. Tap a green. I still want to empty my hand, of course, because of the double vice. So I'm going to play another bird and probably here another Tim. Okay, there we see the pirate Tim. Tim still being on 15. I've got four cards in hand, so that's pretty good. I guess I can pass here show, showing the card. I think I think Tim was asking, is that a shark there? But it's just part of his coat. Looks a bit like a like a shark fin. But uh it's an interesting game, and I have to say uh Tim is still very much in it. I'm on 10, Tim's on 15. I just, I wonder if, okay, there's a Lanora Elves. That Lanora Elves is going to be killed, of course, by the Tims, but he's probably doing that so he doesn't take any damage directly. There's an Unsummon. Oh, of course, Unsummon here on Tim the Enchanter with the uh, Instal Energy. 
Yeah, again, Ed, this is the problem with these enchant creatures that I'm, I'm setting myself up for, uh, you know, for a two for one. I still really like the card, though. I think it's super cool. But it's just hard to make it work. There's a winter orb. Oh, no, that's horrible. Oh, this is horrible. What a good play by Tim. I'm actually going to lose again. I have won zero games, ladies and gentlemen, with my Timmy Revised 40 deck. So I think it's safe to conclude that my Timmy Revised 40 deck is not the best of its type. Because I really think I'm not going to lose this, to be honest. I've got six in hand, going to take four. There's a double vice, remember, going to go to four. Oh, man. Tim tapping two here. What else is he going to do? Another mine, of course. Why not? I mean, I like the mines, but at least I got Birds of Paradise. I got two of those. I can ping him for one. Going to put him on 14. I'm going to untap, well, one land and my birds and my Tim. Going to go to four. Going to draw three cards. think I'm going to die. Oh, uh, I actually, when I had that five card combo on board with the stasis and the install and all that stuff, I really thought I had the game in the back. But yeah, the Vice Howling, Man, uh, Howling Mind plan is just really, really good in that with that scenario. So yeah. And remember, of course, Tim had his vices out very early in the game that helped him as well. Playing a regrowth. I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but... I'm in desperation mode. I can tell you that. Okay, so playing Insul Energy so I can untap my bird again. Okay, great. And now what? I still have too many cards in hand. I'm still going to die. Going to tap a lot. Okay, going to play another Timmy. Six cards in hand, so I'm still going to die, but okay. I mean, if I can find an unsummon, but then I need a target. Tim needs to play me a target. If Tim plays like a Lanor Elves, for example, and I have an unsummon, no, because I'm gonna draw new cards from the Howling Mine. No, I'm dead. I'm 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 dead. Because untap, well, untap, upkeep, draw. So if I have an unsummon in hand, no, because I got no man. Yeah, I could. If I have an unsummon in hand, I could survive. But no, I'm dead. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Okay, um, I'm, I have to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I uh, I thought I had a chance to actually win a game, uh, but it's just the first game. It's the first game, and it was Tim on the play with Black Vices, so maybe, you know, in game number two, when I'm on the play, maybe I'm a little bit more lucky and I can, uh, yeah, you know, empty my hand before the Winter Orp hits the board. Anyway, uh, we're going to shuffle up again, and we're going to go to game number two, and hopefully in game number two, I can get my first victory with uh, Timmy in the forest. Match number two, game number two, and am I finally going to win with this deck? Oh, at least at least this part of the plan is working perfectly, right? Turn one mana dork, turn two Timmy. That That is working. There's a vice. If you have any advice for me, by the way, let me know in the comments below, because I, you know, apparently I can really improve my deck. Maybe I should just forget about that, you know, that stasis side plan, you know, because that, that's not really, you know, that doesn't really seem to do anything for me. Let me put it that way. Anyway, four cards in hand, also drop the birds and no Tim, believe it or not. And there we see a howling mine from the player Tim. And again, I don't really mind because I'm ramping up here, um, you know, with the birds and the lawnmowers, so I can probably just find... I've got enough mana, so I can probably just play out a lot of stuff. So I'm actually happy with the Howling Mine. I do understand that Tim's playing it out because it's it's what his deck wants to do. Ooh, and look at this. Five cards in hand. Not playing anything. No Tim. Nothing. Maybe my hand's full of, like, counter magic or something. Playing two unsummons and four power sinks in the deck. So that could be the case. And he's passing the turn. Okay, so I'm going to go to 18. He's not doing anything. Untapping again, playing an island. Okay, finally finding a Tim, I hope. There's the Tim. 
That is sweet. There's an unsummon though. In end step. I really like this. I think unsummon and vice is a really like classical combination. It's quite nice. I also like unsummon with counter magic, of course. And if you kind of miss that momentum to counter, you can unsummon. And the nice thing is you can also use unsummon to protect your own creatures. I'm just I'm just a fan of the card actually. And and it, it doesn't see that much play. I feel I feel it could see more play in regular old school as well. But again, it's always difficult, right? Because you got to find a slot. Ooh, look at this though. And I want to power sync, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like trying to tap, but Tim still has two lands open, so that's not gonna work. Oh, this is so bad for me. This is so bad. Am I gonna lose again? I'm gonna power sync anyway, just to lose a card in my hand. And also, of course, to make it more difficult for Tim to play something out. So I'm going to take damage, going to drop to 17, going to untap. Of course, I can still untap one land, at least with Winter Orb. It's not as bad as Stasis. Okay, another bird. This is pretty good now. Tapping three, going to empty my hand even further. Okay, things are really looking up. There we see that Protocol Sorcerer that got unsummoned earlier by Tim and... I have to say, it looks like I've kind of got it under control here, especially with all the mana dorks, the double bird and the lanawer. And I'm still kind of thinking about my deck construction. Maybe I should add some giant growths or something. Probably need to add maybe even a third color with the birds of paradise. That's quite possible. Maybe add red, you know, in there. Anyway. There are a few options. Um, playing another Tim. But I think I'm not gonna, actually going to add a third color because I want to make the decks Timmy in the woods, Timmy in the mountains, Timmy in the swamp, you know? Like, do, just do a second one. Timmy in the plains. I think that, that would be fun. Anyway, let's focus on... Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked again. Anyway, Tim playing another Vice. But again, I don't really mind because I've got I've got the mana dorks. He's got to kill my mana dorks. If he has like a hurricane for one, but he doesn't have green green sources, so that's a problem for him. I'm tapping my green land, by the way. Do I have an insul energy? Okay, insul energy, so I can start pinging him a little bit faster. In response, though, spell blast on the insul energy. Do I have maybe a power sink? Yes, there's a power sink. That is really good news for me. That means that the insult energy works. So I'm going to put Tim on 16. I'm going to untap, going to pass. This, I mean, it's looking pretty good for me. I'm kind of optimistic. I think there's a chance of me actually winning my first game with uh, Tim in the forest. I think, by the way, in this video, I've called my deck Tim into the woods, Tim in the forest, and Tim into the forest. But I, I think I'm going to call it Timmy in the forest. Doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, picking Tim a little bit more to make it even more confusing. So that is my opponent, and he's now on 14. And uh, Tim, the opponent, by the way, is a really nice guy. We had a very laid back uh, evening just playing some revised 40 matches. As you can see, it was, it was quite nice. And later on, he sent me a message about the activated ability and how all that stuff worked. So uh, that was kind of nice. I just now got to remember that. So there are no more fast effects. It's called an activated ability. And it goes on the stack. Anyway, tapping some stuff here. Regrowth. This is a blue thing to do, right? Regrowing a counter spell. That is, it's kind of gross. Because your opponent knows you've got the counter spell in hand, you've got like full control. Five cards. There is a little opening though. Like, uh, is there? Not really, because I've got that power sink still. So even if he plays a hurricane, I can power sink it. And I was playing a lot of knowing, of course, that I'm going to ping it, but that means that he doesn't take a point of damage at least. So I do understand this decision. So I'm going to kill the Lanoir and ping him for one with the other Tim. Only untapping one land because of the Winter Orb, of course. Finding more land. Five cards in hand. 
Going to tap three. Going to cast maybe another Tim. Okay, there's Tim the Enchanter. Going to attack with the Llanowar Elves. Going to ping him as well. So I'm going to put him on nine now. Going to pass turn. Okay, now it's going a little bit faster. Maybe next turn I can attack with both my Llanowars. Could put him on 11 and I can ping him for two at the end. So, oh, he's on nine. So I put him on seven, put him on five. I think I'm really close to a victory here. Of course, Tim can still get two more cards. The problem is I also still have that power sink in hand. So even if he's got something, I can still power sink it. Gonna put him on seven here. Gonna untap. Gonna attack, put him on five. Gonna put him on four. Okay, I'm really close to victory. Tapping three for another Tim. Okay, really cool. Four Tims on the board. Attacking him for one. You're going to put him on six. Going to keep five in hand, it seems. Going to put him on five here. Can untap because of the install. And a pass turn. Okay, so next turn I am going to take a little bit of damage, but that's no problem because I'm on 17. There's not really a way out here for Tim, it seems. Am I actually am I actually going to win a game with this deck? I mean, this is a good matchup for me. Don't get me wrong, but you know, after losing so many games, you kind of start to wonder. Unsummon. Oh, again losing my poor instal energy. I mean, instal energy it's a cool card, no, but it's it's so vulnerable. There's a giant spider. Now, of course, I can play my Power Sink. So Tim is giving me that opening to play the Power Sink. I think Tim kind of knows that he's he's done anyway. I mean, if he doesn't play the... Okay, playing an Unsummon even. The thing here is, if he doesn't play the Giant Spider, I can kill him because I can attack with the Llanowar. You know, but if he does play the Giant Spider, I can counter, in this case, Unsummon. So either way, he was going to lose. Drawing two cards, going to seven. And pinging him here, winning my first game with Timmy in the forest. Yeah, showing the fox, which are completely useless. I mean, he can use them to, like, prevent one or two damage from a Lana or Elves, but that's it. So I guess fog is really bad. But um, with this first uh, game win, it does mean we're going to go to game number three. Can I actually win a match? with Timmy in the forest. We're gonna going to find out in the next game. Let's have a look. Game number three of match number two. So this is the last game of this video. And I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the revised 40 action. So if you like what you see, uh, it's really easy to join. It's, you don't need a big budget. And uh, you can check the description below for links to their Discord and their Facebook groups that you can join for free. So if you're interested, you can just jump in. And in the meanwhile, we see that Tim has played a Black Vice, but my hand's already pretty empty. And I'm dropping a turn two Timmy. That's definitely a part of my deck that's working fantastically. Those turn two Tims. That 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 part of the deck is working. And I think I think for me this is the perfect matchup because all those mana dorks, they help me to empty my hand very quickly. You know, the Lana Royal Elves and the Birds, but also they help me to later in the game just play out everything I have in my hand. So that works together perfectly with and the Winter or Plan of Tim and of course the uh, the Howling Mine and the Vice. So it's it's a win-win-win for me here. And of course in the first match where I had to play against that Red and White Flyers deck, you could really see my you know my worst nightmares coming true. Earthquake super difficult for me to play against, for example. But of course the Bolt also being a really good card against my deck. Anyway, let's see if Tim can do anything here. Four cards in hand. And with that insult energy on my Tim, I can ping Tim for two. Looks like he does want to do something. There's a Llanowar Elves. Tapping a blue here for an unsummon. Unsummoning my Tim. Probably should have played it the other way around. I think... Yeah, that's what we're discussing here. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah, so... I'll, so he said, is it okay if I play the other way around? Because then my Lanowar survives. I said, of course. This was, again, this is super like casual magic here. Um, 
we're both drinking a couple of beers. It's uh, when we played this, it was Friday evening, Friday night, so it was very laid back. And Tim's a great guy. He just joined old school, he told me, by the way. So he's pretty new to the whole old school format. I'm playing out another Tim here, of course. That's what I do with my deck. And I'm probably just going to pass a turn. I mean, you don't want to attack and potentially lose your Lanawar Elves because Lanawar Elves is so good against a Winter or Plan of Tim. So I've got four cards in hand, so I'm still not taking any damage from the Vices. Tim playing out another island here. And just passing the turn. Perfect for me. No Winter Orb, no nothing. Going to draw two cards. I'm sure I'm going to find a land and a Tim in my hand with six cards. Because that's basically what I want to do. I think when I'm now looking at my deck and all the matches I've played with it, I think the biggest problem of my Timmy deck is it's got a lot of problems, but the biggest problem is it's just so slow. <laughs> you know, you need even if you have control, you're just pinging for one or maybe two. It's just too slow. There is a Tim Burton. And I mean, you can go really slow, but then you need to have a really good prison plan. And I think I don't really have a good prison plan. So passing the turn to Tim. And Tim just cannot find anything useful against my deck here. And uh, ooh, is he going to fog here? Maybe, yeah, he's going to fog. That is funny. And look at what I'm doing. Oh, I thought for a moment I was going to play a power sink on that fog. I'm going to play a double Tim. And I believe on the second Tim, uh, he wants to play a power sink. So I'm mentioning to him that I have a Birds of Paradise, but... Tim is at other untapped islands still, so he could just tap that. And he can counter. He can counter my Tim. So that's actually what happened here. Sometimes you explain things verbally and you kind of forget, okay, you know, we are going to show this on camera, so you got to actually, you know, tap everything. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter much here. There's another Howling Mine. And I'm pinging Tim. You're going to put him on 15. I mean, as long as he doesn't have that Winter Orb, I don't really care about the Howling Mines. I mean, what would have been perfect for him is if last turn he could have played a Howling Mine and a Winter Orb, then it would have had some serious problems. Four cards in hand here and a pass. Because now I've got my Counter Magic up as well, so even if he plays a Winter Orb, I can probably counter it. I've got three Timmy, so he's on... A five-turn clock, maybe even a four-turn clock if I can keep attacking with the Lanawar Elves. Put him on 11, attack again, put him on 10. It looks like he is going to do something, though. No untapping again. Tapping a forest and an island. Playing a hurricane for one. Do I really mind? Okay, I guess I do. Playing a huge power sink. I guess I'm playing this Power Sync because I want Tim to tap out. I mean, Power Sync in, in certain circumstances is, is almost like a time walk, right? Because right now I'm canceling my opponent for the rest of the turn, basically. So I'm putting him on 11. Going to draw three cards again for turn, so six in hand. But I'm, I mean, I'm on 20. I can even take some damage from the Vice. It really doesn't matter. I'm really dominating this game number three. Finding another bird, attacking Tim here. Going to put him on 10, four cards in hand. I think he's forgetting to take the damage. Going to untap everything. I can ping him again and put him on eight. I'm 
Let's see if Tim can find, can wiggle his way out of this. I mean, I think it's going to be near to impossible actually to do it. Okay, tapping five, hurricane for four. I mean, he's going for it. Why not? Because, I mean, if I've got a power sink, I've got a power sink. And if I don't, I guess I don't. So I can unsummon one bird. I'm not sure if that's a good decision, to be honest. I guess I really want to keep my birds because of that winter orb plan. Anyway, putting Tim here on four. Going to draw three cards. Going to attack him. And that's it already. Going to put him on three and then kill him. Look at that. Yeah, I think for me, to be honest, Tim, this was a perfect matchup. Like, it, it, it's really an accomplishment that you won that first game because everything in my deck works perfectly against all the weapons in your deck. You know, from the Winter Orb to the Fog to the Vice, you know, it, it, it's almost like my deck is, is, is made to play against your, your green, your blue green deck. Anyway, um, thank you, Tim, very much uh, for inviting me for these games and uh, it's been a joy to kind of step into the world of revised 40 like i said earlier in this video if you're interested in this format check the description below join the revised groups and and have a look like i said it's really easy to start you you don't need a big budget it's it's really probably the most affordable um the most affordable old school format that there is at this moment and it's got a pretty active community as well now uh before you go i would like you to i would like to ask you to do a few things for the channel and that is of course like share and comment on this video these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward so if you've done that or if you're going to do that a big thank you from me and then there is one last thing that you can do you can also become a patron of the show like tim and the best way to do that is by checking out patreon.com slash timmy talks have a look on the patreon site you can find all the ins and outs there and um, the cool thing is you can already become a patron of the channel for one dollar a month and your name will then be listed uh, at the end of every single video in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.